todos y a todos. Hello. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone in the panel. I'll wait a couple of seconds for everyone to join. Okay, as I was saying, welcome everyone. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're joining. My name is Alfonso Abarca, and I work for a SICAT office of the OAS. SICAT is a consulting body related to drugs for OAS. SICAT is a forum for the different members of OAS try to find a solution to the drug problem. They also provide technical support for their programs. Likewise, SICAT is the regional coordination center for ICUDDR for Latin America and the Caribbean. Today is a great honor to welcome you to this panel called Strategies for Training Implementation of Substance Use Disorders Pre and Post Pandemic. This panel will focus on the experiences of several important uh, stakeholders for creating training programs and developing workforce strategies for prevention, as well as school programs based on evidence. I'd like to welcome all of our panelists and I'll take a couple of minutes to give you their bios. Today, on behalf of the National Anti-Drug Secretariat of Paraguay, we have Ms. Graciela Barreto. We also have in this panel uh, Ms. Graciela Barreto Castro, a psychologist with a Master's in Strategic Communication and a second degree in social communication. She has a postgraduate post degree in clinical psychology and psychotherapy. She also holds a diploma from the Asuncion University, and she has also studied from the Buenos Aires University aspects related to anti-drug policies. We also have Mr. Francisco Javier Jimenez from Paraguay. Master, he holds a master's in emerging technologies. He has been grad, he's graduated from the university in Argentina. He also holds a degree in public policy. He has also made research in the University of Paraguay since 2001. We currently also have Maria Asuncion Cabral Mendoza, who holds a master's degree in psychopedagogy, also a director of early education in the Presbyterian College in Asuncion. She is also coordinator of the uh, network of schools in Paraguay, and she's also involved in government policy. We also have Fernando Salazar Silva. He is trained in prevention education. He's also part of the training group for implementators. Fernando is also a founding member of ICUDDR, and he has been working in ICUDDR since 2007. He's also worked on the Colombo Plan and research and oversight of national public policies. He has also worked in the implementation of a series of measures in Paraguay related to drug management. 
Enki also holds a degree from the Intercontinental Paraguay University. I would like now to welcome all of our panelists. We have 90 minutes in this session. Each panelist will have an allotted time and we will leave space for Q&A at the end. Participants can use the chat to ask questions. Let's move on then to... Uh, we will now listen to Ms. Portillo. The floor is yours. Thank you very much on behalf of our minister from the Anti-Drug Secretariat of Paraguay. It is a great honor to be here with you all. And it is very, very important for us to, to share all of these messages from academia in this kind of forums. It is important to mention as well the type of initiatives that have been implemented in Paraguay. We have 590 universities, and I just gave the certain number of universities that are public and private in the different areas of Paraguay. And these numbers, of course, have been impacted by the pandemic. It is important to emphasize the, big, the great effort that all of these institutions have carried out in order to carry out their activities. We have around 79,000 professors at a national level for more than a million students around the country. These professors could be, these professors are the ones who are implementing this type of plans and prevention plans in schools around the country. That is why prevention and action are extremely linked in order to generate a national strategy and to be part of the many different stakeholders. And considering the need of having to use this type of concrete actions in favor of prevention in schools. So we are open to implementing this evidence-based prevention plans and we now find an educational scenario where we have qualified human resources in order to develop school prevention programs. Besides concerning uh, professors, instead of concerning or taking care of the specific issues that they locally have, we need to also generate evidence-based documents that are in line with the national strategy. Therefore, the minister has positioned her agenda to accompany all of the prevention measures that need to be based on evidence, which comes from the demand reduction strategy. And we would like to share with you that this specific issue. I would like to emphasize the big effort coming from the private and public sectors with a strategic alliance, a specific area or a theoretical basis for all of our teachers, which will have a specific rating or qualifications. This will definitely benefit all students directly. So this is a very important point that I would like to elaborate on in this conference. 
as it relates to prevention. I will now pass the floor to my colleague. Thank you very much, Ms. Portillo. Ms. Portillo will be speaking on behalf of Ms. Jimenez, who for specific reasons wasn't able to join today. However, on behalf of Ms. Jimenez, we will now hear from Ms. Portillo. I want to send my warmest regards to Ms. Rosa Saldia. Thank you very much for your participation today and for these words in today's panel. Now we have Ms. Graciela Barreto Castro from the Asunción University, who works as well in the University of Buenos Aires. Now the floor is yours, Ms. Barreto. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. Abarca. It is a great privilege to be with you all today and to work together in these different issues from the Academy and from Paraguay. So we are located in the heart of South America. We are between Argentina, Brazil, and Bolivia in this beating heart, as we call it, Paraguay. So this is South America for the universities in many different parts of the world. So what we would like to share with you today is this process of high level of management that has been led by Ms. Rolón Esquivel, who has these two operative arms, if you will, that are related to demand reduction and the also supply reduction. I will be talking about these issues with Mr. Fernando Salazar, and I will now start talking about the specific issue so that I can give you a general idea from the evidence that we currently have and how can we are able to implement a school prevention program in Paraguay that can be decentralized in different stages in the different levels of education in my country. So we have had so many prior experiences before this one, and we have a program that was developed in the education ministry. So there are several efforts that have already been ongoing for this specific prevention plan. I would like to know if Mr. Fernando Salazar is in the room so that we can move on with the presentation. Otherwise, I can present from my side. Okay, just one second, Fernando. Let me see if I can call you. Okay, Professor Alfonso, I believe I can do it from this side. Okay, muy bien. Okay, this is not a great photo of me, but, but this is the issue that we will be talking about. The articulation of supply and demand for the professionalization of demand reduction programs. And this is specifically based for schools, and you know how this and has allowed us to understand that we have some specific focus areas in Paraguay in terms of schools. So we have, for example, information coming from the science departments where we know that no psychoactive substances can be sold in any activity inside schools or educa education facilities, but there are always issues related to this. So the question about how and why we need to work around these issues is clear because the latest drug consumption psychoactive report in schools um, comes from 2014 in Paraguay. And I would like to share this data with you 
right now with some specific substances. 22.5% of our young people between 8 and 18 have been surveyed in cities of more than 30,000 people have revealed or have said that they have smoked tobacco. This is a very wide avail widely available substance. This is one of the problems that we have, the wide availability of these substances. This is a worrying, a concerning problem, culturally speaking, because this is happening in educational settings. 58.9% of young people, basically 59%, have consumed alcoholic beverages, and almost 30% have mentioned that this is a habit already. 6.1% of our respondents have stated having taken non-prescribed stimulants. So we actually did a study around this for 10 years with the Inter-American Commission by means of the Paraguayan Drug Observatory in previous periods. So we have been following this in schools and in Paraguay, we have seen the, in women, the greatest increase of uh, young people using uh, non-prescription drugs. This is a big concerning issue, specifically now in the pandemic. This is something that we have also record uh, records of teenagers using anxiety pills uh, without a prescription 2.3 percent of the young ones that were surveyed declared ha having used this type of stimulants without a prescription so here we have a clear idea of what are those groups that are using this type of substances and on the other hand, we have the issue of these two specific drugs that were present in our groups. Marijuana is the uh, most widely used. 5.7% uh, of surveyed young people in schools have uh, mentioned that they have used this substance at least once in their life, and 2% have reported to do this uh, regularly. So we do have a problem of using this type of situations, and there is a low uh, risk perception. There's this idea that smoking marijuana doesn't really impact anything. So this is part of the prevention programs by means of this diploma. And of course, 2% of young people have reported using cocaine. So we have this scenario of consumption in our country as it relates to psychoactive substances. So there is a problem in our country, as we can all tell. So our minister is new, is incoming. So we can see how we can do this in order to minimize risks. And she requested our teams to go in the line of training and we need to work with evidence-based information. So we need to also understand what are the different rules that will allow us to work with prevention programs. We do have this issue of prevention that we really want to work with private entities. And this is also mentioned in the um, Constitution. This also comes from the health code with the institutional decree for prevention of the use of drugs needs to be present in the different scenarios in order to protect our young people. So this is a program that really deals with this specific issue. We also have the National Paraguayan Strategy around drugs. 
And in the Senate agreement, we also have this as a resolution and by protocols. The specific scenario, the law and legislation allows us to open this type of scenarios and we will be able to meet our mandate from Senate which is part of the national agenda. And finally, to share with you why in schools we are, why are we focusing our, our efforts in schools? Why not other areas? And in reality, we do have very strategic allies in the science and education ministries. Why? Because schools go hand in hand with family because they act on a specific period in people's lives where they are exposed to the influence of their peers. We all know that the statistic at a world level means that uh, teenage years are also risk factors for drug consumption. So school is a privileged place so that we can use to carry out this type of work because it is also mandatory, right? And it has everything related to the specific learning programs. It is also important for the early detection of risk factors. Many of these factors where we were able to, to work allowed us to understand what are the situations that teachers uh, detect. And this is very related to our professors and our Agents are also, our teachers are agents of protection. Why? Because they are close to the population, the focused population, because children in this early childhood will be actually doing this type of work in an active listening. Professors are a key piece of this program. Our teachers are models to be followed, and during the pandemic, they have demonstrated this to be the case. They have definitely demonstrated that despite all of the different situations happening and despite of the fact that they had to come back to school with everything related to the pandemic and its different variants, these teachers are actually models of how to accompany these type of efforts with our children and teenagers. Professors and teachers are the ones who carry out the main function related to prevention, the most fundamental support to prevent any kind of situation. So definitely, we love to share the experience that we can that we have had in this program for our UTC prevention. And it is important to use this internationally and to do this in our it is important to mention that this need is very important to detect, to work and walk towards prevention methods and to leave behind isolated efforts and we can actually have a sustainable effort. So thank you very much, Professor Alfonso, for this type of uh, opportunity. I was really happy to, to be part of this effort. So thank you very much for the time and space to do this. Thank you very much, Professor Barreto. Quite the contrary, we are very, very happy to have you here today. Before passing the floor 
to the next panelist. I really enjoyed looking at one of your slides uh, of the work that you have been doing in, in Uruguay, where it shows that almost 80% of students have uh, stated to have come into contact with this type of situation. And this is an alert, this is a red flag, right? So it is very, very important for us to be working around this issue. So while I was listening to your presentation, we were, I was thinking about what is the prevalence of this type of use. So only one slide really brings the message home as it relates to to Uruguay. So if I had to present this slide, any slide to decision makers, I would choose that one. That would be enough to talk about that issue for an hour. So um, thank you very much, Ms. Barreto, for sharing this information with us and everything related to prevention in Paraguay. Okay, we will now continue with Ms. Maria Asuncion Cabral Mendoza. Ms. Maria Asuncion Cabral Mendoza is, uh, holds a master's degree related to the creation of networks and learning in childhood and early childhood, and she is currently the director of the government school Cabral Mendoza. So, Ms. Ms. Maria Asuncion, the floor is yours. Muy buenas tardes. Eh, muchas gracias, don Alfonso Abarca, por esta presentación. Thank you very much, Mr. Alfonso, for this introduction. It is a great pleasure to be joining this event, and I would like to to thank the school Norberto Bobbio for, for the invitation to be part of this event. So moving with moving on with the presentation of this team. The subject that I will be talking about today is related to the management process and the habilitation process of creating people that will be prepared in implementing prevention models based on school programs uh, based in the UPC. So I would like to bring you back to this specific context first. Let's talk about what a diploma means in higher education that is managed by a third level professional education institution inside the Paraguayan educational system. So the levels of education in Paraguay are regulated by national legislation 9545. And this is a binary situation. There are two sub levels around this. On the one side, the university level, higher education that is organized by higher education institutes. And on the second place, we have the third level professional education that is managed by institutes that have an offer diplomas and the institutes of professor training and they are called officially professional third level professional education institutions so in this context it's important to talk about this third level professional education institution as part of the higher education levels and these specific institutions have the responsibility of professionally training professors and to provide different practical and theoretical knowledge. And the knowledge that these institutions provide enable training, accreditation, and practice of this type of activities. So diplomas in Paraguay are professional programs with the purpose of improving 
human resources. In Paraguay, this type of diplomas require a permanent, mandatory, and constant update in order to improve the professional services by means of a theoretical and practical framework in order to go more in-depth with this type of knowledge. Now, as it relates with the ability, habilitation or the use of these public policies in, the, in this specific school, we follow an approval method that is related to certain criteria that have been established in the internal rule book. And in Article 1 of the Internal Academic Guidelines, we read that there are institutional mechanisms for the authorization. And in many cases, this type of uh, and this type of mechanisms allows to improve and update the work, the workshops, the sessions, and research projects, as well as the academic norms of professors. By the Norberto Gubbio School. In the internal guidelines, we find the different procedures to enable or to authorize this type of diplomas. This type of project needs to be presented before the Academic General Board. So this is something that will have uh, needs to have a favorable approval. So once it has its approval, then there will be a resolution that actually authorizes this diploma to be taught. With this type of procedure, now we have to bring this documentation to the official government entity. And just as article number three of our guidelines state that there need to be a certain specific processes for the authorization of workshops, diplomas, and courses, they need to be also attached in the documentation that will be submitted to the science ministry, science and education ministry, so that it is approved for its implementation. Once this is approved, the academic office will have to approve the implementation of the course. That's when this process will be implemented. So once this has been approved, what are the, this is part of the criteria that are part of the approval for this diploma of implementing agents based on the Prevention Universal Curriculum. We have three areas. Number one, there, this has to be approved as part, as part of public policy. And there are a number of challenges that we have identified where we find attrition and the pertinence of these materials in school. So this should also include the constant training of professors. And this, of course, has to do with the consumption of psychoactive substances in children. This is very related to the second argument. This is something that was established by a research from 2014 related to psychoactive substances consumption in schools. And these type of figures are very concerning that require public policy action. 
The third point has to do with the response to this problem, because we consider that this prevention problem uh, related to the use of psychoactive substances in schools can actually respond this problem that Graciela laid out in the framework of the public-private alliance and partnership that should include the anti-drug ministry and the Ministry of Education and Science that will accompany the implementation. The Norberto Bobbio School, in its functions of higher education, private sector institution, it's the academic institution that designed the program for this diploma and implemented it in as part of human resources. On the other side, I would like to talk to you about the process that was followed to design this diploma of training for implementators of school prevention based on the universal prevention curriculum. So on the one side, we need to talk about the guidelines from the Education and Science Ministry for the creation of a diploma. So we well know that in order to approve this type of diploma, the governing body of education uh, carries this out by a uh, resolution 144 from 2017 from the Education and Ministry and, and Science Ministry. And this establishes a modality of education that can be in-person or virtual by the use of specific technologies. This also establishes the length of the course with a 40-minute um, time frames. And the governing body also requires 100 teaching hours and 150 maximum hours for an official certification. In order to have access to this certification from the ministry, the participants of this diploma should attend 75% of the time. And they would have to approve a competence performance of 70%. The authorization for the implementation of this diploma is an administrative act that is carried out by the ministry, and this approval is valid for two years. As part of the process, we also need to take into account the constitutional and legal um, dispositions that regulate the use of substances in our country. The legal framework from the private and public alliance in order to create this diploma in schools and the diploma of training for human resources has a constitutional uh, basis. Article 71 of the Paraguayan Constitution, among other things, states that programs, educational programs for preventive with preventive approaches will be created with the participation of private institutions. And the framework legislation of the national system is quite explicit in terms of the responsibilities of education, the education ministry, making these educational institutions responsible they need to prioritize childhood and early um, teenage years. So the general law of education in its article 86 states that the education for the prevention of undue use of drugs will be part of the educational service and it will touch upon educational programs that will be directed toward educators and they need to either be part of the group or risk group or not and this is an effort that should prioritize childhood 
A fourth aspect that is part of this of this process establishes as a central point of view the education of human rights for prevention in schools based on the inter in universal prevention curriculum. And we believe that this will allow us to establish the main challenges, the main objectives, and all of the different discussions that go around the implementation of the project with the specific in a specific focus on the production of knowledge in order to widen its coverage in the country and the region. In order to promote this type of programs in Paraguay. On the other side, we need to train the trainers which means training directors and professors in this prevention program for the effective implementation of a prevention program related to psychoactive substances that contains certain elements of prevention that are articulated with the internal rules and guidelines of the institutions that participate in this project, as well as the positive environment. Uh, by means of emotional and social support. And this is created with the school areas uh, for management, which is also related to the education and science ministry. Finally, a very important aspect in this process has been having the international support of Professor Fernando Salazar, an expert from the Peruvian University, Cayetano Heredia. And this process that I have described of this type of diploma and the curriculum has been created and over and supervised by Fernando Salazar. And as a conclusion, I would like to say that we feel honored of having his permanent orientation, comments, and timely intervention, his knowledge and his uh, abilities, and specifically his uh, good heart as a professor. So I would like to take, uh, um, take advantage of this moment to thank um, Fernando for his support. So this has been the process that we have, uh, that we underwent in order to implement this program. So I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And now I will pass the floor to Mr. Francisco Jimenez, who will be elaborating a little bit more about this process from the prevention program standpoint. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Cabral, for this excellent presentation. In terms of the different prevention criteria of this diploma, based on UPC, which is the Government Policy University. Uh, this presentation has been very, very interesting, as I'm sure it has been for everyone in this session. So before I pass the floor to Mr. Jimenez Duarte, um, we were wondering, and we were actually thinking about this type of question some three years ago, what kind of policies and protocols we need to communicate universities in the consortium and those that are not part of the consortium related to the training programs. For graduate and postgraduate programs. And we noticed that this has always been a difficult subject. Your presentation has made that quite clear. 
of the whole process that is involved here. But we were wondering, and Fernando is here as well, in terms of what could we tell the other universities, the members of the um, professors, the, the professor group in different universities, so that internally they can also make an appropriation of this issue. We have seen there are a lot of enthusiasts as part of these universities, and this could also have an impact based on UPC. You have already walked this path, and there are a couple of things that are important from your presentation. On the one side, the internal management. That is a key part of the whole thing, of the institutional decisions that need to be taken. Uh, in order to materialize this type of efforts, and also the appropriation of the drug demand uh, reduction. So I believe that your presentation has been very, very useful in terms of what type of internal processes and protocols are needed in order to do this. So what can we tell other universities in the consortium about the implementation of this type of programs? Well, we just heard it. It's uh, This is a very good explanation of the whole process that is involved in this type of initiatives. So thank you very much for sharing the process that you have underwent in Paraguay. Many of these processes, of course, need to be regulated by the higher education laws in most of the countries. And in the case of these specific issues, it is not as easy to, to implement for academic programs. So now we'll pass the floor to Mr. Francisco Jimenez Duarte. Besides a researcher, he is also an academic general director for Norberto Bobbio School of Government and Public Policy. Thank you very much, Mr. Jimenez. You're the floor yours. Muchas gracias, doctor Alfonso Abarca. Saludo también a todos los participantes que nos... Thank you very much, Mr. Abarca, and thank you everyone who has joined today. Well, the executive director of our institution just um, presented and described in detail the internal process as it relates to the creation of this human resources focused program. Uh, now I will talk at a very high level what the implementation of these programs entail, not only for human resources, but also the whole project. Because we need to understand that this diploma is part of a comprehensive, wider effort. We will not only be training human resources in schools, but we will also be working with parents, with the members of the education community. So in this context, I also prepared a couple of slides that I would like to share with you in order to continue explaining what the implementation process will entail. In order to implement this on the field, the state by means of the National Anti-Drug Secretariat, the SNAP, just give me one second, I'll try to share my screen now. La lámina, el, reitero, para poder eh, implementar este... So in order to implement this project, we have signed a specific contract with the Anti-Drug Secretariat, which is a national institute that among other responsibilities, the prevention of psychoactive substances in schools is part of their um, activities. And we have re re uh, summarized here some specific activities and tasks. So in the case of Senat, there is a specific partnership between Roberto Bobbio School and SNAP. We had to frame as part of the addiction policy the consumption of illegal substances, which is one of the responsibilities of SNAP, as I said. And 
from our institution in the public and private uh, framework we can collaborate as well as in the implementation of a comprehensive program and the methodology includes members of the educational community and in this framework CONAT will facilitate the specialized specialized um, measures and will articulate with international and national agencies the management for the implementation of this program and will develop strategies that will facilitate the implementation of such project. So, this school, Roberto Bobbio, desi designed the program and created the diploma of training the trainer based on the universal the universal program. So the management of these processes was approved and will coordinate with local authorities, also with supervisors, with directors of educational entities and agencies and other directors, in order to consider all of the many different aspects that are part of this project and that are part of human resources management. And of course, this is how we translate the responsibilities for our, of the official institutions and that and the private entities, which in this case, we can take on the responsibilities as uh, and the name of Roberto Bobbio School. On the other side, I would like to mention the need of getting the ICU DDR membership. Considering the commitment that we have taken on in terms of managing human rights and uh, human resources, and having already a first experience at a country level that will be developed in in our country and there is this international consortium of universities for the drug demand icuddr who has the purpose of creating networks in universities to promote a uni uh, training high quality training in the field of treatment and management of addictions we have decided to be part of this prestigious international group we were confirmed as part of this group and this will allow us to share to share knowledge, to exchange experiences with teachers, with other students, and to understand where others are in the in their learning journey around the consumption of substances. This membership, no doubt, will allow us to guarantee the educational required level for this project. On the other side, we have this process, the approval process that falls under the Paraguayan Education Agency. For this purpose, there is a process that was carried out by the Education and Science Ministry that had to be favorable in order to approve the diploma. And this project has been presented on December 12, 2020, and we had a couple of, of meetings in order to, to establish the basis of the scope and also what is going to be the responsibilities of the Ministry of Education. Now, on February 4th, 2021, the Ministry of Education and Sciences issued the resolution number 27, in which this diploma was finally approved. Quiero 
It is worth mentioning that from this approval to this day, we have had lengthy discussions and lengthy meetings with the educational ministry in order to have this specific approval. So this has been a lot of work. On the other hand, what is the scope of this? This uh, resolution of this diploma is basically a postgraduate uh, tool that will allow people to understand more how to train themselves continuously, which is part of the educator uh, graduate graduate programs, and this is issued by the Norberto Bobbio School. So those who participate in this certification, they will be receiving a diploma that will have a very important value as part of their professional career. So this is quite innovative because this not only involves the corresponding agencies, because even though this is part of the educational context, we also need decision makers in other areas, in other areas in public policy. So it is important for them to get involved as well. In this, for this purpose, we have carried out a number of uh, management efforts in Congress. Why Congress? Well, in Paraguay, we have two chambers, Congress people and senators, and the deputies or Congress people, they are regional representatives. And since this project basically takes into account three areas of the country, the central, the Kawasu area, and the Yembuku area, we have considered for this legislators needed to commit to this type of initiative. So we have done this in the Ministry of Education and Science. So I would like to also establish that this has been presented by different members or it has been approved or endorsed by three members of Congress. We have Duto Vigarrola, the president of the drug trafficking um, agency, and we also have Mr. Uh, Garbia de Caballero. So the plen in plenary session of the deputies chamber, they have unanimously voted in favor. That is to say, all of the members of Congress approved unanimously an international cooperation of the Project 625 of March 24th, 2021. That's when we received the declaration with the signature of the parliament uh, representative and the president of the Congress. So as part of all of these efforts, it is important to say that we were able to connect with the political class, with the uh, head of education in Paraguay. We carry out the corresponding management activities for that, and we had to state the scope of the project in several meetings in order to establish that we would be contributing in a significant way with the project. So in May 3rd, 2021, this resolution was issued from the Ministry of Education. And in this document, this specific project was approved in Paraguay. Finally, to end this, so in terms of the resolution of human resources training by means of the political uh, efforts that we have done, we also understand that there is no real budget that could be allocated to this. So with that understanding, we started also working in order to get funding 
for the implementation of this project. And so in that context also, we also met with the Ministry of SENAP to understand what are the international mechanisms by which we can request funding for the implementation of such a project. And this, um, we have four weeks that we had to wait in order to see what is the advancements, what are the different mechanisms to do this. We have carried out several efforts in order to find funding, and we met with the representative of the UNICEF uh, office in Paraguay, Mr. Rafael Obregón, who expressed his interest. And this allowed for obtaining uh, budget. We also met with Juan Carlos Obinaga, director of the binational entity in Paraguay, Itaipu, and he mentioned that he would share with us a certain contexts so that we can also start managing uh, different avenues for funding. We were also told that our scope is linked with the purpose of these two agencies. We also met with Mr. Eduardo Vierna, and this has helped us to find different options for funding. And, and the, the officer that worked in this area mentioned that we were meeting all, most of the requirements and he also offered his support. So, in general, we have several entities that ha are interested in funding the implementation of this project, which surely will be something that we will discuss later. And we will be scheduling a specific date for the implementation of this project that is creating a lot of expectations. So thank you very much for this. And I would like to also um, express my gratitude to Mr. Fernando Salazar because without his commitment, this project couldn't have been possible. Thank you very much, Mr. Jimenez, for this presentation. This really complements and adds to the prior presentation in terms of the very important management effort that is involved in creating this type of international cooperation. This is something extremely important for the implementation of your diploma. So this presentation was very, very useful. That is answering some of the questions that were pending from our previous speaker. So thank you very much. We are always very, very willing to learn more about what's happening with this diploma in order to learn about um, your efforts. Now, it is a pleasure to pass the floor to Mr. Fernando Salazar Silva. He is the head professor in the Cayetano Heredia University in Peru. And Mr. Fernando, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Alfonso. This is one of the main, the, the main thing that I enjoy of being in a panel like this one, the quality of the panelists. And you yourself, Alfonso, have seen how much we have learned so far. So some months ago, we had a general idea of how things were going to perhaps unfold in terms of the implementation of this type of models and the implementation of demand reduction. But not only do we have answers now, coming from Ms. Cabral, but also we have learned about all of the internal processes that are related to the accreditation of new programs 
and in an educational, high level education uh, program. So, what I will be talking about now it will be useful for anyone who is trying to implement this kind of program. And what Mr. Jimenez just said uh, is really relevant for everything related to the territorial planning. And all of that needs to be argued from the political side to the educational side. And this goes actually beyond that in terms of the cooperation between high education, higher education institutions in order to ensure the quality of those programs. So, in this whole scenario, what Graciela talked about today, is something that, no doubt, as you have said, um, has been a big question in our minds, right? We were asking some years ago, why are kids in Paraguay having these high levels of consumption of drugs and even uh, non-prescription drugs? So this is a situation that we need to discuss very carefully because prevention is not only avoid the contact with psychoactive substances or to have a communication campaign around that. This is an issue that touches upon social justice, that touches upon social development, human rights, and providing this type of populations the conditions and environment that allows them to actually carry out their life goals. So this is how this type of work has allowed us to, to understand what we need to do. So I will not go into depth with what uh, Mr. Jimenez has mentioned. This part of the pre presentation is based on the science of the implementation. This is something that we heard as well yesterday from uh, some of our speakers. And we have learned about several stages of how to implement this type of policy. So based on the Senate policies and based on the comprehensive measures that have been taken by this institution, we see the different methods that can be implemented. So we need to strengthen these areas with what already exists. We have a very clear direction here. And we have to establish this in order to coordinate the interventions that has to be done by means of networks. So that from Senat, we can have all the many different policies aligned with the national policy. So from Senat, we can have a evidence-based program. And this is something that needs to be taken into consideration um, quite carefully because the Paraguayan model needs this type of attention. And what Ms. the previous speaker mentioned, there is very a few trained professionals around this specific issue. So that is why I was saying that this is not just offering a program just for the sake of it, but actually a program that responds to the needs of this workforce in Paraguay, corresponding to its context. So from Senat, we need to evaluate the interventions in order to generate evidence that will feed into public policy uh, around drug demand reduction. And this will actually allow us to achieve the purpose. So this is the action framework for this model in Paraguay. So what is the other stage that we need to talk about here? On the one side, we need to prepare the conditions for the prevention. We need to talk about the agreements and strategic partnerships. Mr. Jimenez talked about that. The main responsibility falls under the Ministry of Education. However, this shouldn't be divorced with other agencies' efforts. So it has to be in line with the education 
ministry in Paraguay. And this has to also link to the prevention school component in other areas related to S to CNE. This sounds complicated, but what we're really talking about is a school prevention program that has three basic concepts. On the one side, a school policy that has to be coordinated by an institutional program, or however it is called in your countries. Also, it has to have and promote a positive environment in the school, which is part of what the education program needs to have. And it also need, needs to have a third component, which is the prevention curriculum, which is a series of sessions that usually occur during um, certain consultancy areas or tutorships. And that considered the well-being of students in Paraguay that actually add or strengthen the educational, educational programs. We have also found a couple of other programs based on this type of intervention so that we can generate this micro environments, microclimates for a better type of implementation. And of course, we need to think about the platforms on schools that has to do with a general educational management and strengthening of management capacities of directors. This whole planning that I have just mentioned, since it is linked with the yearly plan for schools, it needs to be part of the continuous education plan that Mr. Jimenez was referring to that allows for the professional development of our teachers, because we know that universally, specifically in Latin America, this is very important for a better uh, economic compensation of professors. And there needs to be also an intervention, an intervention scope or outlook uh, locally. This school intervention needs to be localized. We do have scientific evidence that school performance is linked to this specific approach. That is to say, we need to link this social development with our plan, educational plan. These strategic alliances this also provides a legal framework that needs to be connected to what Mr. Jimenez said. There have been declarations by Congress and by senators and by the education ministry that aims to have a greater access to funding from the national budget. Currently, the work is to go out and fundraise in order to effectively implement these projects. So, as part of the different actions that we need to take into consideration, this will allow us to prepare the conditions for prevention. We need to establish the action platform, the construction of working groups per territory that are made of the representatives or people involved in school prevention. We're talking about the Ministry of Education, talking about academia, local educational supervisors, and other partners from government, civil society, and government organizations. Why is this important? Well, because centralized planning falls apart when it is not adapted to its context. So what we're talking about here is global adaptation. The purpose of all of these local platforms is to have local partners that allow us to have local territorial planning, also the implementation of local resources and intervention and the monitoring of local intervention and assessment. That is to say, we are promoting a decentralized management that allow us to 
make these type of projects or initiatives and governance initiatives to move in unison or in one line. So that is what we are focusing our efforts right now. And with this, the training of the workforce in prevention based on the Prevention Universal Curriculum, it refers to the training with evidence-based results that actually generate evidence of the effective implementation of the different com components. This is something that our friends, our friend Michel actually talked about of what is being done in Europe. And this is the model that we are imitating here. So how does this work? Here's where the prevention science comes in. So, for example, we have taken all of the UPC courses, and for each of them, we have determined the results, the learning results that are linked to this intervention. That is why this is related to a practical practical framework of educational measures. We have the, the cycle of implementation linked to the institutional plan. And in the next cycle, we can have the educational, educational implementation. The next one is practices for the correct environment. The next one, implementation of the prevention curriculum. The next one is the adjustment of monitoring evaluation. The next one is the positive environment. And the last one, the implementation of technical practices. When we finish all of that, and when we make our professors competent around all of this, they will receive the certificate. In my opinion, this is the best model that we should follow in order to guarantee the type of qualifications that we aim to have. And this is currently being implemented in Paraguay. Finally, let me talk about the implementation model. We need to carry out a baseline study and results so that we can understand what was the change from the beginning to the end. And based on the prevention science model, the idea is to adapt this and to make it more clear for everyone. And this will allow us to respond to many questions. So on the, on the one side, an effective response. On the other side, a fidelity to the design. Number three, technical support, because normally they are left uh, on the one side, but they are the ones that actually guarantee the success of any intervention. So when we have all of that, we will be able to reinforce by means of public policy. So in the case of Paraguay, they will be able to communicate all of this and we can escalate it at a national level. So this is the process that Professor Jimenez is, is using and doing for fundraising and getting budget allocations for this model. So I think that this is something that is worth it to share with everyone because this is a unique model. Now in Paraguay, one of the questions Alfonso was, how, what can we do to find other universities? Well, Paraguay has seven um, government areas and it's, its capital city. And we have a distribution of training centers. So the idea is to decentralize this by means of the partnerships that have been developed by the Bovio group and other local universities. That is to say, we need to have an implementation plan by the allocation of resources for the national implementation. Now let's talk about challenges for Paraguay. The challenges is the development of the workforce. 
uh, around prevention. It wouldn't be desirable to have this amazing proposal uh, left behind. Now, the development of the articulated model in Paraguay, we need to provide a sustainability framework. We need to strengthen public policies for school prevention and the adaptation of this model locally for its expansion. This is a final slide that I would like to share with you all uh, that shows the whole working group that has been uh, directed by the ministry head of Senat. So thank you very much for this space. I hope I have contributed uh, with something in this panel. Thank you very much, Alfonso. Thank you, my dear Fernando. And of course, you have contributed to this program. Many of the elements that we have heard are applicable for the implementation programs, particularly in schools. And I have noted some points from your presentation. And some of these notes could be shared with other teams and can be implemented in other scenarios. So you talked about strategic partnerships here that could be part of the original design to establish this type of platforms. And the training that make learning evident. There are many efforts around training that are based on universal curriculums or not, but the question is still in the air. Is there evidence that this type of efforts actually lead to learning? So that is a very important point. We can see that as part of all of this training, we have seen that there is a lot to learn in terms of the impact of the people that will be trained. So this is something that I wanted to emphasize from your talk, these three points. So thank you very much, Fernando, for talking about all of this. I believe this, this panel is basically a whole. We have four or five people speaking, but we have a unified mission here. And as you mentioned in Paraguay, the message goes beyond what they are doing locally. This is something that can be and should be replicated as a model in other countries. So I don't see any questions on the chat right now. However, I will ask a couple of questions. I cannot let these minutes go to waste, of course. So in the case for UPC and other curriculums that are available, there are efforts to bring this curriculum from UPC to other universities from the Colombo plan to bring this to the to remote methods to any of the many universities that are part of this consortium. So universities for a long time have been working in this type of communication technologies. So in the case of the Roberto Bobbio School. I would like perhaps Ms. Cabral or Ms. Jimenez to talk about what is the vision that you have in terms of the education that the school provides. And I am interested because um, you are appropriating basically this curriculum and adapting it to the local context. What is the school doing effectively to, to make this happen? So if you could share this information, it would be useful, I believe. What are the, the, the plans that you have to make this transition? Sí, si me permite la, 
Magister María Asunción, voy a responder. So, if I may, I, I would like to start. So, for this project, we, of course, have faced with, uh, are, are facing many different restrictions coming from COVID-19 uh, context. Paraguay is not exempt to any of these. And in Paraguay, we are still using remote uh, models for technology for, for education. So we are having the semi or, or, or hybrid model. So the Bobio School has a platform that has incorporated technologies, advanced technologies. So all of the courses that have been developed are done through this platform with the resources that are asynchronous, right? So these lessons are recorded in video and available for students. So we're doing this and we have met with other beneficiary educational agencies. We are also talking with the education ministry to guarantee the access to education. Because in Paraguay, it's not only a matter of having access to the internet, but actually to having access to a good connection. So we are discussing with the state agency in charge of guaranteeing access to the internet, and they mentioned that there were no um, problems around that, that they could do that. So I believe that this type of declarations are very important when they are coming from the state agencies, because this allows us to understand how this project will be implemented further on. So this is something, Mr. Alfonso, that we have included in our plan, of, of course. The only thing that would be still pending would be the signature, final signature of these institutions that uh, have mentioned or expressed their interest. Thank you very much for this type of explanation. I believe many other institutions will be interested in this type of, of processes that you have mentioned. I believe that it is very, very important to promote international cooperation with universities and with other international uh, agencies and universities that might be interested in this type of model that have adapted, uh, that have been adopted in Paraguay very, very successfully. Alfonso, if, if I may add to that, you ask the question of whether this model uh, can provide evidence of whether this is actually working. So we are seeing some publications being made available about the certification of the first uh, school prevention diploma that are following all of the processes that have been described here that the Cayetano Heredia University has followed as well. So these results are being presented and the as an and acid result and it said as it relates with tobacco and other psychoactive substances. Yes, my question was not necessarily related to the diploma that you have implemented in Peru, but this panel has actually uh, talked about not only the design of the program, but also connecting with government agencies, with searching and going for, for budget. I was not questioning anything related to... So the efforts that you have done or the or whether there was evidence that it worked, I, I was just emphasizing the whole process because there are a lot of uh, training sessions and that is great. But uh, how does this relate to the, tra to the actual learning of students? I believe is something that needs to be as well emphasized in the work that everyone is doing. Thank you very much to all of our panelists today. 
I would like to just pass the floor to Rosa Sandina from Paraguay, from Senat, who is here in representation of the Paraguay Agency, an anti-drug national agency. Before that, I would like to to appreciate the efforts of our interpreters, Carlos and Enrique, for their efforts. So, Ms. Saldivar, you have the floor now. Thank you very much, Mr. Alfonso. Thank you to the whole panel of experts today. We are extremely happy and pleased to be part of this, of this opportunity. I believe that the management around this conference has been amazing. We believe that we are part of an amazing team, a team that really promotes learning, that has a serious mission, that is committed to its cause. And we celebrate how we were able to participate in this project because everything that has been mentioned in terms of strategic partnerships and all of the many different things that we need to to make happen so that we can have this type of educational centers approved this team very well prepared very technically knowledgeable um, is a critical piece of the success of this type of program so from this demand reduction area we support and we accompany the management of this effort that will no doubt will support us in our efforts so thank you very much for all of your presentations thank you very much mr fernando salazar thank you very much all of the different panelists today because all of the things that you have mentioned today are quite important and relevant. And we are here, thanks to Mr. Francisco Jimenez and Maria Asuncion. So we are here to work as a team, to work together and to reach the success that we all wish and desire. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everyone, thank you for this comment and have a great rest of your day. Thank you very, very much.